Hi everybody, in this tutorial I wanted to share with you some fill stitch ideas. Some of these are ones that are pretty common and there's a few other ones that are a little bit more creative. I have a downloadable stencil of this design if you want to follow along and I'll link it below. The first stitch we'll go over is called the basket weave stitch. Start by making horizontal stitches across the shape. Keep a little bit of space in between these stitches and try to make them as straight and even as possible. Once you've filled in the entire shape, it's helpful to use a blunt tip needle for this next part. Come up at the top of the shape and then place your needle under and over, weaving it in and out of the horizontal stitches. When you've hit the bottom of the shape, you can go back down through the fabric and then you'll come back up through the fabric directly beside the first stitch you just made. This time you'll weave your needle through in the opposite way that you did the first stitch. You'll continue weaving in and out of these stitches until you've filled in the whole shape and you just alternate which stitches you weave under and over for each one. You'll start to see a really nice texture form that looks similar to a basket. This next stitch looks very similar to a basket weave stitch and it's called the burden stitch. You can set the stitch up the exact same way as the basket stitch. I'm going to lay some straight stitches across the shape that are evenly spaced out. Now you're going to make small stitches across the first and second lines of stitches. They should alternate across the first and second row. You can play around with how dense you want to make this stitch by making the stitches closer together or a little bit more farther apart. Once you've filled in the first two rows, you can work the stitch one row at a time moving forward. You'll just make stitches on the third row that are in between the legs of the stitches above it. Continue working this way down the entire shape until it's all filled in. This next stitch is the stem stitch, which is usually an outline stitch, but I think it looks really pretty. To make this stitch, you will make one large stitch that's about double the stitch length you'd like to make. Keep the working thread off to your left and then come up in the center of the stitch you just made. Continue to keep the working thread to the left hand side and then proceed one stitch length ahead. For the rest of the stitch, you will come up at the very end of the stitch above it and continue working down in rows. To make this stitch a little bit more textured and fun, I did use a contrasting color and I alternated the colors each row. Just make sure that you keep the working thread to the same side throughout this entire process to make sure that these stitches lay neatly together. This stitch is called couching and it uses two contrasting colors. You'll use one thread to lay down and then the other one to use as an anchor stitch. Come up to the fabric with whatever thread you want to use as the laid thread and then you will just lay the thread along the outline of the shape and make small anchor stitches over top of the thread. You can space these out pretty far or make them a little bit more densely packed. And I like to work around the outline and then work my way inward to fill in the shape. When you're done filling in the shape, you can just take the laid thread and then pull it back through to the back. This next stitch is called the seed stitch, which is an open fill stitch, which means that the fabric slightly shows through. 
it's extremely simple. You can basically just make small straight stitches that scatter around and go in every which way. And I like to just space them out pretty far apart and then use another color to fill back in the areas that I want to fill a little bit more densely. Again, you can make this as filled in or as spaced out as you want, depending on what kind of texture you want to create. This stitch is called the long and short stitch, and this is great for blending colors together. I'm using two strands of thread for this, but if you want a really subtle blend, I would use one strand. I chose colors that were similar in shade, but not completely similar in shade, so it's pretty obvious where the color change is, but I just wanted to do this for the example. Essentially, you'll just make long and short stitches, and they don't have to be perfect. You can kind of vary the length as you go. And then once you fill in as much of the shape as you want, you can go in with your second color and overlap these stitches into the ends of the other darker color. I really like to use this stitch for thread painting, but I also like to use it for really large areas I need to fill in. I prefer not to use the satin stitch for large areas because the stitches tend to sag if you carry these stitches across too long of an area. This next stitch is the chain stitch, which is usually another outline stitch, but I really like to use it to fill in things that need a little bit more texture. Come up through the fabric and then you're going to go back down where you initially came up. Don't pull the thread all the way through though, you're going to catch the little loop that forms and then move a stitch length ahead and go up through the fabric with your needle. Pull this little loop and it should catch on the thread and then you're going to go back down where the working thread is again and catch the little loop that forms. These will form little chains and you'll just work this stitch as long as you want. I prefer again to work the outline of the shape and then work my way inwards in kind of a spirally fashion to fill in the entire shape this way. This next stitch is called a brick stitch and I like to think of it as kind of just a alternating back stitch to fill in a shape. To start, I like to make a row of back stitches across the shape. And then the next row the stitches should be staggered, so the end of the next stitch should be in the middle of the stitches above. This might make it to where some of the stitches along the edge of this line might be a little bit shorter, but that's totally fine. You just want to make sure that they are completely and evenly alternating. I apologize, some of this footage might be ever so slightly out of focus, but I hope that you get the general idea. This next stitch is probably one that you either love or hate, and that is the satin stitch. It is a really great stitch to fill in leaves, in my opinion. I don't really like to use it a lot for other things, but basically to fill in a leaf, you will start by making a stitch at the very top of the tip of the leaf, and then you're going to work these stitches along one side of the leaf. So you'll just work from the edge and then end the stitch at a slight diagonal on the midline. Fill in the entire left side and then you'll do the exact same thing on the right side, but it, the stitches should be at the opposite diagonal. The stitches will meet in the middle of the leaf, which will form a natural seam line that looks kind of similar to the central vein of a leaf. The final stitch I wanted to share with you today is called the closed herringbone stitch. You'll make a small stitch at the very tip of the leaf, then you'll come up through the fabric along the edge of the shape and cross over to the opposite edge of the shape. This will make a diagonal stitch and then you'll repeat this in the opposite direction on the other side. You'll continue alternating all the way down the shape this way until you've filled in the entire shape. 
This stitch is fun for leaves as well, or pretty much anything that you want a little bit of texture in. It's not really a raised stitch, but it does have a little bit of dimension because of the overlapping effect of the threads. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and learned a new stitch or two. If you like these kind of tutorials and you're interested in learning even more about embroidery, I have a bunch more tutorials on my YouTube as well as my Patreon, so please check out both. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.